If you are considering taking certifications as an Agile coach or a Scrum Master, this video is for you. I'm going to talk a little bit about the reasons of why having or not having a certification may or may not make sense. And we're going to look into a few. Now, this is an opinion piece. Everybody is entitled to have one. I will share here what I think based on my experience as an Agile practitioner and as someone who has had a few experiences with certification. I do have a few that I hold and I do have others that I entirely abandon. So let's get started. So I'll start by answering the first question. Do you need Agile certifications? No, you don't need any Agile certification to be successful in Agile. I speak from experience as an Agile software developer never certified, no courses on the matter. I was a Scrum Master. I became a Scrum Master before I had my Scrum Master certification. I was an Agile coach, employed as an Agile coach, much before I had my Agile coaching certification. So yes, you will find jobs and yes, you can live your life as a beautiful, fantastic practitioner in agility without getting certified. And I don't only speak from my own experience. I speak from the experience I, the, of the people that I coached and that I mentored, even in organizations. So, you know, you can be so successful without having that very specific badge. Now, of course, there are reasons for you to have them. Like I said, I myself, I took those certifications. Some I, you know, I clearly abandoned because they made no sense over time, but it's all a matter of experience. So if you want to enter this world of agile certifications, just enter knowing that they are not necessary and they are a choice or something for you to just go and discover. So let's talk quickly about the types of agile certification, especially for agile coaches and scrum masters. I, it doesn't exist anywhere a category for these things. This is just my opinion, but I think there are three types. There is the type where you would um, pass an exam and, you know, and, and that's great. You pass the exam and then you have the badge. It works a little bit like more technical certification. So if you're a software developer, um, you know what we are talking about. Then there are the certifications that are more like a process. They are either like a process that you apply to where there's a panel that looks, you know, at, at your body of knowledge and experience and some that, you know, not, not exactly like that, but maybe they are more courses like a cohort in which you go with a group of people for weeks not just a few days, but four weeks together so that you can practice and come back and, you know, and share the experiences that you're having. And then there is the third type, which is the type that I have a few reservations about, and that's what most people are doing. And those are the flash courses. You know, those are courses that take one or two days, and then a lot of content is crammed into that. And then, yay, you are certified in the end. It is not only very overwhelming because you see a lot of things in a very short span, uh, but also it only scratch the surface. So yes, these are certifications, but they should be called certifications of basics off because you only leave then with the very basic understanding, given the conditions and how the knowledge is given to you. And they satisfy a market of, you know, immediatism. And I know some of us are really desperate to just get that badge and keep going on, but Quite honestly, you can't skip practice in anything in agility. So yes, you can do your certification. Just know that they are not the place where you go to really train your knowledge. They are the place where you go and you get the badge. And since we are talking about just go and getting your badge, let me then address then a third point, which is not all institutions are created equal. And you know, their 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 organizations, you'd be surprising like. What do you know IBM for? I know IBM, uh, you know, for computers and uh, hardware and some types of software. I definitely don't know IBM as a company that's highly invested in agility, a company that's really helping advance the state of agility in the world. But they do offer agile training. Now, I don't, I don't mean any disrespect, but I wouldn't necessarily choose, for example, IBM is my choice of a trainer. And then on a similar vein, I wouldn't choose, uh, you know, certain institutions. Like there's one I'm going to mention. Um, it's called, 
the Scrum study, and they are known for other stuff, but they're also known by giving Scrum Master training. And quite honestly, I looked at their material and I would say, wow, some of the things I, I see here, they might have been true. Some of that in Scrum back in 2012 and earlier, but Scrum has evolved since. So their materials didn't evolve. And you go to a training that doesn't reflect what the state of agility today is. So that's what I mean by, you know, research your organizations. And I'm going to mention a few here and just know that this is a, a preference based on my knowledge and how I go about the Agile community. And hopefully that's useful. So the organizations we are going to cover for Scrum Master training are um, Scrum Study, or we won't cover Scrum Study because it's like, you know, don't do them. And we're going to cover Agile Alliance, Scrum Alliance, um, Scrum.org, and let's see what we find in there. So Scrum Alliance and Agile Alliance were actually founded by one of the founders of Scrum, Ken Schwaber, and, and they are really well-respected institutions in the world of Agile, having great Agile gatherings. A lot of people in there are super knowledgeable in the community. Now, they do offer a lot of that model that I told you I dislike, which is you go to a training, it's usually a one or two day training, packed of things and then you leave certified and then every two years you pay to recertify or some different model like that so you know you get your badge quickly i'm not so sure how effective that is and i say that because i used to have a few of those certifications and um you know even though they are very respectful as organizations i do not recommend that you do that to yourself like I said, you only scratch the surface in the topics in those types of courses and the courses are not cheap. So if money really isn't the problem, I say, yeah, just go and learn. But there are other ways to learn, especially on the more basic courses um, to learn that thing. But then the problem is that if you don't do their basic courses, you can't do their advanced courses because they work like a little stepping stone. So that's really my issue with those organizations. And that is why Ken Schwaber left those organizations to found scrum.org. So I will say this quite honestly, if you are going to, to, to do the path of, I want to become a scrum master and a certified one, I would say go to scrum.org. That is my personal preference. That is what I find the most amazing trainers as far as Scrum goes. And when you look at the Agile community in general, the contributions of the people that come from um, Scrum.org is so respectable. And yes, they do work as well on a ladder theme as in, you know, you can be very basic and then intermediate and in advance. But let me explain how this works. So PSM1 is not something for um, just Scrum Masters, but it is, you know, professional Scrum Master level one. And you pay something like 150 bucks. And if you pass the exam, that's it. You just need to show proof that you know Scrum. So I think, you know, the barrier of entry is small. The price is right. And it feels, you know, it, it feels very, very right as a component. And then as you advance for PSM2 and 3, things get more interesting. Obviously, it's not as cheap so that everybody can claim it, but it's also not just an exam. It becomes a process. So when you're trying to be a PSM3, which is the highest level of a Scrum Master, in which, you know, after that, if you want, you could apply to become a trainer. In order for you to get there, you really had to pass a panel of appreciation of your work and of your knowledge. So you really didn't just go at it alone. You had mentors with you. It was not a, you know apply today and tomorrow you wake up certified. So it's super respectable and the process will help you learn not only just about agility and scrum and scrum mastering, but also about yourself. So I found I find it a highly respectable um, avenue for you if scrum master is your thing. Now, how about safe? Would I recommend safe certification? That is a, you know, it's a difficult answer in here. And like I said, I'm gonna go with my point of view. I don't think SAFE is a great model for agility. It's a very constrained, hierarchical, and complex uh, framework. So they use complexity to attack complexity, which is not the best way to go about it. I don't think that, you know, I can show you here what is the simplest implementation of SAFE. And you tell me if you find that this is simple. So um, 
you know, and they also work in this model that you go in for a training of one, two, sometimes even three days, and then you're certified in the end, and then you pay to keep your certification. So I already don't like the model, but also I don't like the framework. Now, will I say there's a lot of company there adopting SAFE and hiring for SAFE? Absolutely. So if you're asking about, should I go on a SAFE career and have a job? By all means, go and do that. But if you're asking me what it's like to become an Agile coach or a Scrum Master, I will never recommend that you go to, you know, to SAFE uh, training of any kind. Now, let's talk about Agile coaching certification. As you know, I am an Agile coach and I am a certified one, so I definitely have an opinion on that. And I think one of the things that is different when you compare it with Scrum is that there are not that many um, bodies regulating Agile coaching as a, you know, as a framework, because it's a framework that was kind of like given to the community. And then the community kind of evolves it. And that, that's the easy, nicest thing about agile coaching, because if by any chance any organization decides to give training on that, you're going to find very similar um, understanding of what the, the different stances and skills of agile coachings are. Like, Basically, any training that you pick, my, you know, chances are they will cover the same good stuff. Now, there are two only that I recommend if you really want to become certified. And those will be IC Agile or um, Scrum Alliance. Let's look at each. So IC Agile, basically, the people who created, who first uh, invented, if you will, the framework, they are part of IC Agile and they help advance many, uh, many of the elements of the Agile coaching certification in there. So that was the first thing that really draw me to the, the organization. There are things I just like, um, just like in the scrum.org and many of the places that you have so many certifications to choose from that you can feel lost. But if you're an aspiring Agile coach, ICPACC is the one which is an accredited level of Agile coaching, which is a beginner Agile coach if you will. You can graduate and go to other levels, but I'm not so sure, you know, once you're an established coach, you really don't care that much about the certifications, in my opinion. Um, another thing that I really love about going for, you know, the IT Agile is because I am all about framework neutral agility. I don't want to get stuck and I don't want my clients stuck in, but is this like that in Scrum or should we add some Kanban here? Those are all frameworks that can come in from help for help and we use them whenever needed. And I don't want this to be a sore point on, you know, when I'm helping my clients. Now, another thing that I really like, which is anything with scrum.org and the same is with IC Agile is that you don't have to pay a fee to keep your certification. In particular with IC Agile, you're gonna notice that the certifications that they offer are, um, you know, skill set or capability based. So they talk about a certain level of human skills and, and that's it. You're not going to really degrade, you know, from those skills if you don't, um, if you don't keep paying the certification, you know, you don't become a worse facilitator over time. I mean, if anything, you're going to stagnate, but you know, you learn the good stuff. Um, and I really appreciate that all the trainings in there, they can be experiential. Now, they can be. So as an example, I created my Agile coaching program way before I actually accredited with IC Agile. And you can find in IC Agile places where they're going to give you a three-day course to become an Agile coach. I do recommend that. My program and many other places I see, they do similarly as well. So those are cohort based and those are, you know, you follow along in my case with four weeks before you become certified because we do a lot of things together. It's really a place for you to grow your skills, not a place to come in and wake up certified um, from one day to another. So that's my appreciation of IC Agile. It's highly respectable, highly recognized. It's not cheap, uh, but no Agile certification actually is cheap. So then there's Scrum Alliance. I find interesting uh, that a place that is so committed to the state of Scrum certifies people on something that is very framework neutral because agile coaching is framework neutral. That being said, it's a very respectable institution and they do it right in the way that, um, you know, you have to show um, that you have coached before. So it's one of those certifications that can only come as a badge of proof of your work. You can't have that before you're doing the work, which I think, you know, most certifications should be these days. You have to show proof of Scrum 
The only thing I dislike in there it is that you have to be certified with them. So you have to be certified product owner or certified Scrum Master. It doesn't matter if you have a certification from somewhere else. So I dislike that. The And then you have to show proof that you have at least a thousand hours coaching individuals and teams. And then, you know, and then you enter in a process in which during that process, you're going to show proof of your skills as an agile coach, like showing that you really understand several models for coaching. And as a professional coach, um, you know, I'm, I know I had to do that to certify myself outside of the world of agility and is a much heavier process and I was really impressed to see that Scrum Alliance does that. So needless to say that it's a beautiful certification that's really really hard to get um, but like I said the two things I don't appreciate is that you have to have followed their previous certification and once you pass you're gonna have to keep uh, you know paying to, to keep it because that's the model that Scrum Alliance and Agile Alliance and many others do you follow. But it's a great respectable certification if you are a game and if you have all the experience. Like I don't have that one. Many people don't have that one. So that could really set you apart. So then we answer the question, do Agile certifications help you get jobs in the Agile space? So like I said, some certifications are amazing and they are rare and only very good organizations will know what they are. But, you know, the others, they are so common also that everybody else has them. So I find it really hard to say that for sure an Agile certification, either as a Scrum Master or as an Agile coach, will open the doors. They they might, but they will, you know, not one more than the other. So I would, you know, I would also mention that having been... Uh, an employee in other organizations interviewing future team members. I couldn't care less about the certification. And I know other people that work just like me and we were not looking at the certification and we are relying heavily on how the person explained their experience or in the event that they didn't have the experience, let's have that chat. And in the interview, we feel, you know, the passion and the vibe of the person and that's how we hired. So, Maybe you get more jobs in any generic place if you do have an Agile certification, but to actually work in Agile in great places, let me tell you, you don't need all those certifications, if any, I would say. And ultimately, I want to say two things. One, and I know the video is getting long, but, but hear me out. The first is that um, success will come with experience. And I know people just keep accumulating badges as if that could show a lot of things, but it doesn't show anything other than, okay, you're a great student, you love to study. And I do so too, but you know, books are cheaper. No joke, many certifications, they're so expensive that when you really see how many thousands of dollars you're, you know, it's an expense. If you have all that money, that's great, but you don't need to spend all that money. And that is not going to shortcut the experience and the practice that you really need in the field. I always tell my students, you know, it doesn't feel the same. We create safe spaces for things to be practiced, even in a cohort based program, but nothing will really beat your experience. So don't let the certification be the do all and all of things. The second thing is that not all knowledge is certifiable. And I think this really is important because we keep thinking as if Scrum, Agile Coaching, Kanban, those like are the three things that you can, you can think or do currently in the space. But quite honestly, uh, you know, non-violent communication is a very particular um, domain for you to study and learn. Uh, you know, they will give you a lot of results in your communication with others. Um, working on your emotional intelligence and, you know, even, I don't know, like visual facilitation, you can learn these things. And those things are not necessarily certifiable. There's not a, you know, a, here is the most fantastic agile certification for those skills. And you still need to learn them. And those are probably the ones that you're going to be taking a course on as well. So are you really going to be running after the next best certification or are you gaining a palette of skills that really complete you as an Agile coach or as a Scrum Master? So Agile certifications, are they friend or foe? That was my opinion. I know this was a long video, but I will leave to you to answer. Let me know in the comments. I am definitely curious because I know a lot of people seek certifications, but what I said here, does it match your understanding of what's going on with Agile certifications today? So let me know. 
In any case, I hope this video was useful. I'll stop it here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.